Hello. I guess I'm finally getting to reading a story on this channel. It's something I've always wanted to do for for a long time, years even. I always kind of watched videos like that a uh, long time ago from people like Mac the Microphone, others that I don't remember the name of. And, uh, and today, the first one I'm going to do is a two short ones. Uh, this is out of a paste bin. This from the account name is Doom Annan. And, uh, uh, let me think. <coughs> My mind just, it was, uh, what I was saying was, uh, these, a lot of these stories come from right friends, let's call them that, on, uh, slash MLP, and that's what I'm gonna call it, don't at me, but, uh, this was, uh, the actual thread doesn't matter much, but there was also a piece of artwork that another, uh, draw friend, uh, did for, uh, 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 did actually for the story when it was being made, I get, as it was being written through, because the board itself is kind of slow and you can just come back the next day and continue writing for it if you got other things to do. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, this artwork that I'm probably going to use for this video when I edit it together is made by an anonymous person with no name attached to it, so if that changes, I I will always credit accordingly. I will always be fair with that type of thing. And uh, that's about it when it comes to that. Uh, the, the longer story um, ha features music. Uh, I'm so fucking nervous. And I, it's over something stupid. Features music kind of as part of its storytelling. Because of the whole doomer and boomer and coomer, zoomer memes that's been going around lately. This story was made around in October, I think. October 2019, when that thread was up. It says 100 days ago that it was, I guess, updated. Or Friday 18th of October, and I don't want to keep you too long before I get to the actual story, but... 18th of October, there you go, 2019, two little stories. And the first song for the longer story, Always Forever, is Colts, Always Forever. I'm going to butcher this. Bauhaus, Bauhaus, Bella Lugosi's Dead. And this I'm going to butcher because it's Japanese. Yohohan, Yohohan, Shin wa Keki, Watashi no theme, piano version. <laughs> I screwed that up so fucking bad. Galaxy 500, King of Spain, Part 2 from This Is Our Music, which I assume is a movie or something. Johnny Goth, Scary Movie, which I don't think has anything to do with uh, that series of 
fine, fine film. Timber Timbra, This Low Commotion. Pearl Coyote, Die. Not even gonna try. Yokoso Hitori Boshi. Welcome to, from Welcome to the NHK, which is some I've always been meaning to watch, and my chair squeaks, don't worry about it, I will make a, don't look at me, I will make a conscious effort to not move around when I'm doing this, a mass of the fermenting dregs. She is inside, he is outside. Uh, Alicar, the Sword Feet song. Now, yeah, that's pretty much in order of appearance, basically, until Always Forever shows up again at the end, which isn't much of a spoiler, I guess, for what the story is. But I'm not gonna I'm gonna kind of sing when the lyrics pop up in the story just a little bit. Some of the songs I don't quite remember how they go, but some of them I kind of do. So uh, I guess that's about it. Cool. And I'm gonna edit the thing in with the next thing. So. Let's begin reading it, I guess. All right, let's, before we begin, um, I might screw up, and if I do, I'll maybe go back a sentence or a couple. <clears throat> and and uh, in order to redo it. So, let's begin with Welcome to Equestria. You, f oh, before I start, uh, Anon and Nani means you, the reader, if I guess you're male, because there's no feminine and stories that I've read. But Anon is you, you are anonymous. So that's usually how these types of stories go. You finally made it, Nani. <laughs> Let's start over because impressions of the characters and their voice mannerisms. I won't go too far with it, but I'll kind of go towards it just a little bit. You finally made it, Nani. Welcome to Equestria. You stumbled backwards and fell. The pinky <laughs> leaned forward reaching its long neck t at you. A lifeless smile was fixed on its uncanny face. Well, is it everything you wished for? We've all been waiting for you, Nani. Your dry tongue stuck to the roof of your mouth and replying felt difficult. Aren't you glad to be here? I'm not here. What are you saying, silly? Of course you're here. Where else would you be? The creature's eyes rotated in their gaping sockets, and it cocked its head to the side mechanically. This isn't Equestria, and I can't be here. I'm sleeping. Th this is a dream. <laughs> Nani, this isn't a dream. You're here now. No, th that's wrong. I know this has to be a dream. The last thing I remember was going to sleep in my apartment. Nani, you forgot to turn the oven off before you went to bed. Had you? You don't remember. Then I have... Then I have to wake up. I have to turn it off quickly. But then you can't, won't stay here in Equestria with us. And I won't get to throw a party for you, Nani. And that's just not right. But I can't stay here. Help me wake up. I don't want to die. Quickly. I might not have much time. It's too late, Nani. Or too early. 
who cares? Then I'm dead. You're in Equestria, and you'll be here for a long time. No, no, I don't believe you. I have to wake up. I can't be dead. And if I was dead, I wouldn't be dreaming this. The thinly, the thinly stretched skin on, on Pinky's skull loosened. Her, her smile dropped and her face distorted nauseatingly as another took its place. With a stomach-churning crack, a purple horn budded from its forehead and the creature's pink mane and flesh molted from the neck up. The face of Pinky was replaced with an eerie face of a human-like twilight sparkle with disturbingly elongated equine features. Very clever, Annan. So you are in a dream, but why does that matter? It spoke in a cold, low-pitched, androgynous voice, not at all like the twilight sparkles from the show. Because you aren't real. Did you hear, girls? We aren't real, he said. A disembodied chorus of laughter joined in mocking you. You aren't real. I'm going to wake up now and... God damn it. Give me a second. No, shit. With a blood-curdling crunch and the pinky and twilight chimera sprouted a second head, a skeletal white unicorn vaguely resembling rarity with a bird-like mouth and small human-like eyes. Several rows of teeth showed as it smiled sadistically at you. And, wh and what makes you think you can wake up, dear? You are quite worthless, even here. You tried to move your hand to pinch yourself, but you realized you couldn't move. Only observe. You were in a like a fleshless eye trapped in your own body. Shit. Shit. Let me fucking go. I need to wake up. Annan, don't you see? You're useless. This is what you deserve for being so useless. What kind of voice am I doing for Eddie? My God. D darling, darling, I don't... Jeez, that's how I should do it. The human-like face of Twilight smiled slightly, its bloodshot, wide-open eyes drilled in on into you. You closed your eyes and imagined yourself somewhere else, back home, in your bed. Look how insolent he doesn't want to look at us. Then we'll make him feel us. Where's this going, my god? You felt a lurching feeling in your stomach, then a hideous sensation like flesh stretching beyond its intended proportions. Something birthed itself from your stomach and extended towards you. Its weight made you lean forward against your will. Hey, Annan, uh, um, a synthesized nightmare of Fluttershy's voice called your name from below you. You heard the buzzing of flies against your ears and a foul odor assaulted your senses. Annan, um, remember when you tried to kill yourself? I wish you hadn't, um, failed. The stale, foul-stilling breath of the creature was on your neck as it warmed t closer towards your face, its teeth clacking together. You ignored it, not wanting to look or see what it was. Hey, um, Annan? Why did you fail, Annan? Please don't ignore me, Annan. It makes me nervous. C come look, look at me, Annan. You felt your distended belly writhe as the creature reached eye level with you. Then to your horror, you felt something tug at your closed eyelid. Uh, wait. Come look look at me, at please. Just look at me, Annan. I miss you, Annan. The teeth pulled and gnawed on your eyelids, 
gradually as the distorted voice of Fluttershy continued to plead an unsettling monotone. Look at me. Look at me, Annan. Look at Fluttershy, Annan. I, I miss you, Annan. No! Leave me alone! You screamed instinctively, your voice cracking. But you are alone, Annan. You are always alone. The voice of false twilight replied. It was getting hotter. You could feel the sweat running down your brow. Now we'll, you'll be alone together. This is what you wanted, to make friends with yourself. Be grateful, Annan. The heat was getting severely uncomfortable. You were sure you had left the oven on and now you had to wake up now. Nah, I lost my place. No, fuck you. I'm gonna wake up from this dream, this nightmare. The chorus of shrill, unearthly laughter drowned out your defiant shout. Did you hear that, dear? He thinks it's a, still thinks it's a dream. How ignorant can that monkey be to still think he's dreaming? Look at me, Annan. I promise I'm, I'm not a dream. I'm bite your eyelids off um, if you won't look at me. Liars, you're all lying to prevent me from waking up. I have no time for this shit. I have to wake up now. I can feel the heat. Whatever you do you mean. You you have all the time in Equestria, Annan. The others laughed. You tried waking to wake up again, ignoring the sound of false Fluttershy's chatter chatter I'm moving the chair like I said I wouldn't. A false Fluttershy chattering her teeth together and counting down when she would eat your eyelids right next to your left ear. Nine, eight, seven. You desperately tried and tried, but the heat made it impossible to concentrate. Four, three, two. Then a new voice interrupted the countdown. It sounded somewhat like Applejack but there was something hideously off about it. Now hold your horses here, Fluttershy. I got something to say to Annan, and... So sorry. Say to Annan, and he won't look at us in the eye when you're squirming about. So why don't you go away? The, well, I want to go away, Fluttershy. After a silent pause, you again felt the disgusting feeling of your flesh moving as whatever the thing that had pretended to be Fluttershy retracted back into your belly. The foul smell retreated, and so did the buzzing of flies in your ears. Now, that's better, ain't it? You can look now, Annan. I'm an honest pony. You hesitated, then reluctantly squinted towards the voice. Oh, this must be so obnoxious. I'm so sorry. On the ground in front of you sat a naked semi-human male body. Semi-human because the head was a similarly unsettling mockery of Applejack as the others had been of their originals, and because the human body, it, it grew from lacked hands, instead of hands, or indeed hooves, on each forearm where a wrist w should have been grew the head of a living crow. The creature was holding its arms next to its face, allowing the beaks of the crows to reach where its eyes should have been. The, crow, the two crow heads were greedily picking at the broken sclera sacks. I've never heard of that word before. I uh, scrunched up inside the Applejack head's eye sockets. It smiled a pain, joyless smile at you. Don't mind the babies. You gotta feed them or they get in a real foul mood, you see. You shuddered but couldn't look down as you didn't want to see what yourself, you yourself looked like. What the fuck? I am an honest pony, Annan. You're not a pony. I'm an honest pony, it repeated. The salt from beads of sweat getting into your eyes was burning them and blurring your vision. <clears throat> you told yourself to wake up, but it was useless. Tell me, Annan, what do you think it time is to the dead or the dying? What? Do you really think, really still think you're dreaming? You're not dreaming. Many other voices from all around, behind you, below you, 
above you joined in, forming a swarming, repulsive chorus. You're dying. The head of false Applejack cranked open like a hatching egg, splitting vi vertically from the middle and revealing only a vortex of pitch-black empty void, which grew like a gaping wound in reality. The crow heads cried and thrashed their, hor their heads horribly, joining in the discordant cacophony. I've never heard that word before. I need to eat better with that kind of thing, I guess. Look at the birds up. Your flesh burned and, your, and you screamed something, not words. The chorus of voices addressing you melded into one distinctly disturbing yet impossible to define tone. One can spend an hour in a dream, yet feel as if you dreamed for a month. Your eardrums were popping from the howling abysmal wind, abyssal wind behind those words. Tell me, Anna, what do you think time is to the dead or the dying? And that's the end of that story. <laughs> I, uh, wow. I uh, didn't think it would go in that direction, as I kind of went over it a little bit, just to see how long it was. And, uh, I don't think this second story has much to do with uh, this first one at all, because I've read it before and I know what happens. Oh. And I'm going to... Get to that in one second.